This conference will now be recorded. Oh, good. And <laughs> I'm going to open up a window. Wait. All right, guys. There we go. Life's always fun. Um, I've changed up the slides a little bit, so we're going to have fewer slides and hopefully be able to run through some things faster. For those of you who are new, these are the CHIP, the Community um, Health Improvement Plan Priority Areas for 2021 to 2026. And we don't cover all of these in every meeting, um, and we try to go in-depth in some of these areas uh, as much as we can. So be thinking about that as we're going through this. If you know anybody who you'd like to invite to a meeting, I still have some openings um, for the rest of the year and being able to do some presentations. So, um, okay. Let me see if I can get this thing to go today. This is our agenda for the day. We have uh, Dr. Jean Manko is going to be on. We have Patty who put a very uh, appetizing uh, starter into the chat box. You may have to do it again there, Patty, uh, which she'll be talking about in a little bit. Uh, then we'll have our tobacco and healthy weight crew and uh, then get into some announcements. This is our access to care area. Um, we definitely, in health insurance coverage, I haven't heard much from the community about what's happened with the ending of the emergency uh, Medicaid coverage. So if anybody's on and wants to talk about that, they can. Uh, we also need to increase the number of medical providers in the community. And we also want to increase home and community-based services. And I have the pleasure today to introduce Dr. Manko. Um, I, wanted, I want to do a quick trivia today to keep you guys engaged, all right? So does anybody know what HANS stands for? Mm. If, if you do, go ahead and unmute yourself. Dr. Banco, you can't do it. <laughs> That's my next slide. <laughs> anybody? Who's, has anybody been around long enough to remember forming hands, getting it all pulled together? Nobody? <laughs> all right, well, I'll spill the beans <laughs> then. HANS stands for the Health Access Network Delivery System. Um, and it was came out of some of our access to healthcare community work that was going on. Uh, can you, Edgar, you're on. When did we start that work? 2007, eight? Uh, we, uh, we started doing it. Uh, we did a needs assessment. Then we put together a team that would look at the needs assessment. Right, what year was that? They, Do you know? And then uh, that was in 2000, uh seven seven 2008 uh there was a the formation of a subcommittee that looked at access to health care and in 2008 they looked into uh, uh several partners including some uh our area hospitals got together and began meeting to create uh what it's now hence and hence i think it opened in uh it took us a while 2010. It, it, it opened in 2010. Okay. okay. So that, in a nutshell, is a very it's a, that's 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 the history behind hands. <clears throat> Love it. Well, I have the pleasure of introducing you guys to Dr. Jean Manko, who's the volunteer chief medical officer for the Hands Clinic, and uh, letting him talk a little bit about the efforts that they've done to help improve access to care in our community. So, Dr. Thank Manko, you, I. I don't know whether you had a chance to try and pull up your slides or if you got it figured out, but I have them set up and ready to go for you. I'm, I'm going to go with your sharing, okay, okay? so I, I couldn't do it. So no um, thank you for inviting me to sort of do this presentation today. Um, I wasn't sure exactly who I was presenting to, so I, I wanted to go through a little bit of what plan is, uh, is accomplished. Um, I've been involved now the last two years as the chief medical officer, as a volunteer. And I thought I'd sort of end with why I took this position. So let's go to the next slide. All right, so just a little history, as you've already shared, uh, we opened our doors in 2010. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization and we're dedicated to serving the medical and dental needs of our uninsured population in St. Lucie County. We are members of the FAFCC, uh, which is this, the Florida State Organization of Volunteers in Medicine. And we were also nationally recognized as volunteers in medicine um, in the U.S. Um, 
it is tremendously uh, an atmosphere of, of caring for these patients um, and uh, giving back to, to our community um, that, that we are representative of. Our mission statement is, is down there, as noted. Uh, we are committed to giving the primary care services uh, and health care um, to uh, low-income, uninsured adult residents of St. Lucie County. You're up, Stephanie. Your next okay. one. Let's see if I can make it all this work here. There it goes. Things are a little slow today. All right, just a, a quick review of our patients. Uh, they are ages 19 to 64. Um, we, the patients have to be qualified, uh, be at the poverty level of uh, under $29,000 per year, have no insurance coverage, and reside in... Oh, too far. Sorry, Doc. Teach me to go reach for something to drink. There you go. <laughs> nope. nope. There you go. There you go. Good. And reside in St. Lucie County. What they receive once they qualify to be under our care is certainly all of their medical needs, all of their dental needs, and we now have specialized care, which I'll go into uh, shortly. Next slide. Mm -hmm. This is some of our numbers, uh, just to give you an idea of, of how many patients we are actually caring for. In 2022, we had 3,371 new patients registered at HANS. We care for over 5,000 patients currently under our care. Um, some people leave the area, some people uh, get jobs and get insurance and graduate from our program. So there's a, a bit of a turnover each year as new patients come in, some uh, leave our, our, our care. Um, if you estimate the number of patients that are available in our county, it's about 11% of the population, which equates to over 30,000 people that actually could have access to our care. Uh, so getting the word out there is critically important and uh, having people know that we're available and to see them is essential to, um, to their health care as well as our well-being. Um, we have saved uh, the state uh, lots of money. Uh, this was from the FAFCC uh, when they collected all the uh, relative values. We saved the state $12.8 million uh, in 2022. In fact, we were the number one uh, volunteers in medicine clinic uh, in the state of Florida in generating that kind of dollars. Uh, Doc, we get I have a question for you. Oh, well, yes. For those of us who are not quite as savvy, what is FAFCC? Oh, it's a free and charitable clinic of uh, the state of Florida. These are all the volunteers in medicine clinics, nonprofit. There's 124 volunteers in medicine clinics in the state of Florida. Great, thank you. I, 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 I will. Please stop me when you when, when you need to uh, ask a question. I'm, I'm low key. And so the sources of our financial support, um, we've become a line item in St. Lucie County budget. That took a lot of effort, but we were successful in achieving that. Um, we, we, we live on grants and donations, certainly. Next slide. So what do we do um, in 2022? Um, I actually put in this slide everything that we've accomplished since I've arrived, which was um, March of 2021. Um, but I wanted to sort of give you an idea of what kind of work we've done. When I came on board in March of 21, we had 11 clinical volunteers at the clinic. We now have 62 clinical volunteers. That's including our medical side as well as our dental side. Uh, we've been able to add a specialist to our center uh, in the past, we've had some frustrations in trying to refer our patients out to specialists and begging them to do it for free and then begging the hospital to do things for free. This way, we have uh, I have retired colleagues that uh, are bored and I call them and they all are volunteering. Uh, so it's really a pleasure to get them into the clinic to act as a triage specialist for our patients who really can be handled as an outpatient versus those that need inpatient care. Um, we now have the specialists, including dermatology. We have three cardiologists, we have a gastroenterologist, and we have a general surgeon. And we have just added uh, an allergy and uh, asthma uh, specialist. We have developed a women's health division, which is I'm a, a, an OBGYN, so it's, that was one of my priorities. Uh, we are able now to not only uh, do the general uh, health needs of uh, gynecological patients, which is pap smears and physical exams and breast exams, but we now have the equipment through the generosity of uh, several donors, as well as Cleveland Clinic, that we have the equipment now to take care of those patients who have abnormal pap smears uh, in terms of diagnosis with colposcopy. 
uh, treatment with uh, cryotherapy here we have here, as well as doing what's called LEAP procedures, which are electric procedures to remove abnormal tissue. We also have an ultrasound scan. Um, a lot of times it's difficult to get ultrasounds on these patients, and so I'm training our retired OBGYNs as well as our nurse practitioners to do their own vaginal ultrasounds. And that's been a real joy for me because I did ultrasounds my whole career um, to watch them learn a new skill. Uh, they're like they're like little kids again, which is great. And our patients are just welcome the aspect that we're teaching, which is which is really superb. Um, so in our women's health clinic, we have four board certified OBGYNs, all of whom are retired and giving back, and two nurse practitioners uh, that are doing women's health care. We've established a diabetic nutrition clinic. A lot of about 20, 30% of our patients are diabetic um, and uh, some of the nutrition has been overlooked. And so we now have uh, several nurses um, who are qualified now to educate these patients on what to eat, what not to eat. Next slide. Doc, I'm gonna interrupt you because yes. this is something we have been working on a lot. When you, the diabetes education, is it, are you doing a self-management program at all? Or at this point, it's just one-on-one -on -one a diabetes education? The, the way we've structured it is we have a block time, I think it's twice a month in the afternoon, where they have one-on-one -on -one educational uh, aspects to diabetes. Um, a lot of these are new diabetics. They're just recently diagnosed by uh, some of our uh, primary care people, and they are referred into this clinic for uh, education. We had a diabetic foot specialist who unfortunately left uh, last month because uh, her father was very ill in South America. She hopefully will be returning because we, we tried to do their, their feet uh, care as well as um, their nutritional care. Okay, next slide. We've been very busy in 2022. So I wanted to talk about our educational program. When I first came on board, uh, Lisa Hatch, our executive director, said we needed a CMO, uh, a chief medical officer, and I said, what's the job description? She said, well, we really don't have one. What would you like to do? I said, oh, my passion is teaching and I would like to make this into a more of an academic environment. So I met with the 11 clinicians, all of whom got excited about giving back and teaching the next generation. And in the past year and a half, we are now uh, on faculty at two medical schools, Florida State Medical School and FAU Medical School. We get third and fourth year students from Florida State, and we get the MD PhD students from FAU who are doing their three years of research uh, at Scripps in, in Jupiter. Um, we are associated with the College of Nursing at FAU. We have long time been associated with them, and we get um, uh, multiple nurse practitioner students going for their doctorate level uh, education uh, that rotate through with our nurse practitioners here. Um, Betty Sarnas, one of our nurse practitioners, and myself actually have been invited last year to teach a summer class to the doctoral level nurse practitioner students, which I found was fantastic. And we've just been asked to do this again this year. Next slide. We have developed a program um, with Nova Dental School for our dental side, um, and they are sending up fourth year students now on Mondays and Tuesdays to uh, do uh, mostly extractions. And what's exciting for these students is that they have to do a certain number of extra extractions uh, before they are able to graduate. Um, and the rotations that they've had in dental school, in those private offices, they don't get exposed to extractions. Well, our patients don't take care of their teeth very well. So most of them need extractions. And as the students will, will rave about, by the end of the morning, they have fulfilled their requirements for graduation by doing five extractions. So they are thrilled coming up. Uh, we are now expanding it, uh, hopefully in the next month, to have endodontics also um, here. Uh, and some of the faculty from Nova Dental School will be coming up to actually monitor and help the students uh, during the days that we don't have volunteer dentists to do that. We are also associated with St. Lucie Medical Center Family Practice Residency Program. Uh, residents are uh, post-graduating from a, a medical school and now in a three and four year program to learn the uh, trades uh, of their specialties that they're going into. Uh, we get their second and third year residents uh, rotating for 30 days each time they rotate at TANS. So we actually for 10 months of the year have a resident here also seeing patients under the mentorship of our, our clinical staff. Um, in exchange, I had to go over there and give lectures once a month, which I really enjoy doing uh, on women's health issues. Um, and so it's been a nice, um, 
combined win-win situation for both. Um, we've established um, educational meetings uh, inside our clinic um, with lunch and learns once a month, either the student, the resident, or, my, or myself, or one of our faculties will present something of interest uh, sort of up to keep all, all of us up to date. Um, when the medical students uh, heard I was doing this, uh, they told the dean, and the dean approached me, and now we have 85 virtual invites for each of our lunch and learns. So it's been a very successful educational program. Next slide. So what are we going to do in 2023? Well, we've already started since we're four months into it. Um, I want to continue to expand our specialty and primary care staff. Um, we just added, um, we add currently one to four each month. Uh, and these are, these are people that have just heard about hands and they call. Um, th their name is given to me. I talk to them on the phone. Um, and it doesn't take me long to convince them that this is a great time in their life to give back and, and train the next generation of clinicians. So it's been very easy to get them involved. Um, I do want to focus on our in-house specialists. I think that's a wonderful thing to have uh, where it's sort of referral in-house instead of trying to get them into private offices. We had a mental health program uh, initiation in 2022 um, with uh, FAU um, Nursing School uh, with Dr. Beth King uh, from the nursing school. And it was a very successful program. We had one student come through, spent three months, and actually was hired by one of our psychiatrists that mentored her. Um, we are now restarting again. I just spoke to Dr. King this morning, and we will be restarting a program with her students, um, hopefully by the fall. Um, so that, that's, a, that's a mainstay. There's a tremendous need for mental health, as you all know, in, in our community. We have a mobile unit um, that goes into neighborhoods. Uh, we are going into Lincoln Park currently. Uh, we started this uh, just at the end of December, <clears throat> and the patient volume is increasing each, each day that we take the mobile unit in there. The word is getting out. And the purpose of this is really to take medical care to the areas that are unable to get to us. And we plan this year to probably go to two, two spots uh, each, each week now. Um, and maybe increase it beyond that as time goes on. Next slide. Um, we would like to have an in-house pharmacy. That's one of the goals that Lisa is working for. It's a, a 340B pharmacy. So uh, our patients will have a one-stop uh, setting for their medical care, for their specialty care, for pharmacy needs, et cetera. Um, as you all know, as a nonprofit, it's always challenging to get financial security. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's been challenging for us as well. We are doing uh, much better this year um, as things are coming together. Um, the County Board of Commissioners has been a tremendous support for us. We've been writing grants, uh, which is a must, uh, and we are establishing working relationships, hopefully with the Ryan White Found Foundation for some of the patients that we see, and certainly from donors in the community. Um, we also are supported by the FAFCC uh, with a grant also. Um, I added number six because uh, that's been a recent um, ex expansion of what we do. Uh, these are students that come through. Uh, these are exceptional students. We sometimes get calls from private uh, physicians and clinicians out there in the community that are looking for adding a nurse practitioner uh, to their center. And so this year we've already placed two um, who graduated um, in, in working conditions here in St. Lucie County. So we become a um, quote employment resource center for a lot of the private physicians which is great next slide so um i i presented at the um state uh, uh meeting in november on um, what we were able to accomplish at hands and how we can help other uh, volunteers in medicine clinic do the same thing and i this is how i signed off because uh, volunteers in medicines has a hard time getting volunteer retired clinicians to come in and see patients. So I thought I'd sort of share with all of you, why am I doing this, which is, which is slowly becoming a full-time job, that, according to my wife. Um, and my wife is involved too. She takes care of all the volunteers and making sure they have sovereign immunity, which is instead of malpractice insurance, the state is actually providing that for all of our clinical volunteers. So if you just hit the next, the next arrow, Stephanie, Yep. You know, why do I volunteer? I have found a purpose. You know, sometimes in retirement, you sort of get lost out there and, and golf is not for me. Um, and I found a real purpose in my life. Next. 
Mm -hmm. I love dealing with patients. I've enjoyed clinically practicing medicine for 45 years before I retired. Uh, and that's been a strong point and the ability to go back and, and not only take care of patients, but take care of patients who truly appreciate what you're doing for them. Next. It, it has reinvigorated my passion for teaching. Um, it has been just a joy for me. Next slide. You know, it's not often you get a chance to perpetuate the next generation, the knowledge that you've learned in your career. Um, and it's a wonderful opportunity. And it's, it's one of the salesmanships that I use to get retired clinicians to come back and, and share their time to volunteer. Next slide. I am very proud of not only what we've been able to do for our patients, but the mark we are starting to really make in St. Lucie County in terms of access. Next slide. Point in, point in. Um, and I think you can tell just from my presentation today that um, it's a great source of pleasure for me. Um, there are not many things that can be this satisfying by giving back, by teaching. Um, and by working with others like-minded as myself. Next slide. So this is our contact information. Um, feel free to contact us if you have questions uh, or any concerns, or I'd certainly be happy to answer any questions that you have now. This is your opportunity, guys. You've got a captive audience here. So feel free <laughs> to unmute yourselves and ask away. And Christine was able to join us too. So you, Christine, you asked my question earlier, uh, which was access to health insurance and what has happened with the ending of the emergency Medicaid coverage. Have you seen an increase in applicants? Well, there's this thing that they, they, they gave it a terrible name uh, called the uh, Medicaid unwinding. I, I, I think that's such a horrible thing to name it because what does that mean but um i have not seen a, a mad influx i think it's going to trickle in i think that as people slowly start going back to their doctors and suddenly they realize oh uh you know medicaid is not covering me then they'll they'll come around and get recertified um so so far uh, there yeah, haven't gonna, been a lot I'm going to interrupt you just a second because I just realized we have lots of new people on the phone who have no clue who you are and why I called on you. <laughs> Probably should have started with that. I apologize. All right. Well, I'm a health insurance navigator, state and federally certified uh, to help sign people up, mostly for the ACA, uh, for uh, what people call Obamacare. Um, no, I'm not an agent. No, we don't earn commissions. No, we don't work for insurance companies. We get paid from a federal grant. And uh, but now uh, with the ending of the pandemic, uh, they keep it, it's a little bit like the Y2K thing. They keep warning us as oh, there's going to be this influx of people that everyone that was on Medicaid uh, is, before the pandemic had to recertify every six months. Uh, they stopped that because of the public health emergency, and now that it's coming to an end, uh, it needs to resume. And so everyone is getting some sort of a communication, either paper or uh, other form, not everyone actually. About 50% of the people that are on the Medicaid rolls are getting contacted. The other, the other 50%, um, they have data, current data for them. And so they don't need to recertify. But um, it's a very simple process. But so far, most of the people I've been contacted by are people that are on this, uh, are Medicaid based on disability, and we can't really help those folks. It has to be Medicaid based on income through DCF, not through Social Security, that would be no. Um, and basically, if, if they have not received something in the mail, um, it's probably best that we not help them until they receive that uh, something, some sort of a notification. Now, some people are gonna throw it away, because if you, if you if you've been on those um, uh, on those webinars that tell you what the letter looks like, um, if I got a letter like that, I'd probably throw it straight into the trash. But uh, uh, sadly, uh, so um, yeah, they need to 
contact someone about recertifying, but uh, in a lot of cases, they might have to get on the phone with Medicaid or you may have to get on the phone with them. And um, I'm only doing that at 7 a.m. Because <laughs> if you've ever been on the phone with Medicaid, you know what a nightmare that is. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's what's going on with uh, that so-called unwinding. Well, yeah, see, I, just wanna, I just want to put a plug in. If you find that you deal with patients that do are not eligible for the new Medicaid, please send them our way. That they would qualify for what we're doing at hands. Sure. If they, if they don't qualify for the ACA, they don't qualify for uh, uh, Medicaid. I definitely send them either to volunteers in medicine, whether you know which county, you know the appropriate yes. county, or an FQHC. Yeah. But those charge on a sliding scale. Stephanie, there's a couple of questions that were chatted. One is on the educational program. The other is the mobile van for gynecological issues. Um, the educational program is an opportunity for the students and residents to take an interesting patient that they saw and delve deep into it um, in terms of doing some research and a presentation. So I, I, I do that to make them learn. Um, and then they can share that knowledge with our clinical staff and the people on virtual links. So it's a, it's a forced way of education, basically, uh, because I have to evaluate all of them at the end of the rotation. As the mobile unit, um, the mobile unit is equipped to do gynecological services. Uh, we are not doing that right now because um, the nurse practitioner that's on that unit um, is not one of our uh, women's health nurse practitioners. So those patients that need GYN care at this point are referred into uh, hands our, our main center where they're they're seen uh, rapidly to to take care of that. Any other questions for Dr. Manko? I, I know want to that... thank you, Stephanie. Thank thank you for the opportunity. It was a, it was a, it's always nice to share what we're doing. That's that's for sure. Well, and I, I gotta tell you, part of me is like, hey, you've got a captive audience here. Do you have an ask, what can this group do to help support your efforts? Definitely talking about your programs, referring people there who don't have health insurance. Yeah, I think I think our biggest hurdle right now is getting the word out there that we exist. It, it just, we've gone to a lot of religious organizations. Um, we've gone to the food banks. Um, you know, people just don't know we're there. Now, a lot of these people are probably new in the, in the community uh, and in, in bad shape. Um, and never heard of us. But if you can get the word out there that we are here, uh, we have two navigators that will process um, the, the, each patient to make sure that they qualify. And once they qualify, they get all these services. Oh. Yeah, and it's always hard to get that information out because you don't, people don't necessarily pay attention to information until they have a need for it. Yes. And then are they in the right place at the right time to be able to receive that information? So. It's, good. it's an ongoing educational process, and I think you guys have done an amazing job um, being able to make it work. I have people who, who say, don't we have a volunteers of medicine clinic here? I'm like, yes, have you not heard of HANDS? They're like, oh, that's HANDS? So sometimes they don't even know what they're talking about. They, they know there's a clinic out there that helps people, but they don't necessarily see it as a volunteers in medicine clinic. So yeah, we, we have, uh, I didn't add this on my slides, but just recently this week, uh, we've been approached to be part of an internal medical residency satellite um, rotation. So that would be a that be a real wonderful way of of not only educating the residents but also allowing them to see what it's like to be in St. Lucie County and maybe even to set up shop when they finish to 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 see patients and open up their practice here. Love it. Anybody else have any questions? Is there do you have a flyer um like a general flyer for the clinic gene? Uh, we do, actually, um, uh, and a website, basically. And I will see, if, well, I'll send it to you, Brittany. Um, and yeah, awesome. hand, hands of SLC, I'm not sure whether, I don't remember whether the brochure is on there, Doc, or not, but um, I've got it. And if I were really good, I would have had it queued up to be able to throw it into the chat box, but there's still but one of me. So. <laughs> Can I just I'm gonna leave this a, a, a oh. plug. Um, of course, I'm with the American Heart Association, and if there's ever a need for any um, educational resources related to um, different heart conditions, um, hypertension, 
Um, we even have some, some information around diabetes since we know that individuals with diabetes are at a higher risk for cardiovascular disease. Um, feel free to reach out and we can see how we can support you in that. Thank you. Brittany, if you want to go ahead and put your contact information in the chat. Yeah, um, Doc will have it if he has any questions. I know you've worked with Lisa before as well, so he can always go, who's that gal with American Heart? <laughs> she will track you down, so. Now, before I put the slides back up, I have the pleasure, sort of impromptu here, uh, of introducing Patty Roberts. Don't have a slide for her. Patty, you didn't have a slide or anything for us, did you? Okay, good, all right. Because otherwise I didn't have it. Um, to talk about a wonderful new project uh, that has been going on and um, we've been talking about it now for a little bit, but uh, Patty's ready to start kicking things off. And so now I'm gonna shut up, Patty, and let you talk. <laughs> Stephanie, you can always have the floor. Um, <laughs> Hi, I'm Patty Roberts with the City of Port St. Lucie Parks and Rec Department. And we do have an exciting new um, project coming up. And um, what, I'm, what I'm looking for is this is such a great community of passionate um, healthcare providers that I'm looking to you for assistance here. What the idea is, and um, our, it was actually discussed at our recent City Council um, workshop, um, in about a month or two ago, um, in that we want to establish what's called, it, what I'm calling, an inspiration trail, which um, will be at one of our city parks. And it essentially means um, that we will have messages of inspiration slash affirmation um, engraved on, um, on um, signage, if you will, um, some plaques, some signage, um, strategically placed throughout a city park. Um, one of the parks that we're kind of targeting right now, and this is all of course um, going to have to be approved um, through the chain, um, would be Woodstork Trail Park. I don't know how many of you know where that is. Um, it's behind St. Lucie Medical Hospital, um, and it's a beautiful trail um, right there by the, by the uh, water. And um, what we would do is engrave these messages of positive reinforcement along the trail in a city park. Um, again, addressing mental health needs um, throughout our community. So what I was looking to you guys for is I need messages. I need messages of, you know, um, of encouragement. If you're having a, you know, a rough day and you're out at the park, we, we have a lot of people, honestly, who come out there during their lunch hours um, from the hospital or um, um, at nighttime, of course, um, but just to see this positive message as you meander through the trail is the idea. So I do have the survey um, that our communications folks designed, <clears throat> um, and I'm going to hit send now, if you would. Um, but it, so it's in the chat. It's actually, I think, two or three questions. It will not take you long. Um, but what we're asking for is some brief, because you have to remember, I have to pay an engraver to put this on a sign. Um, so, you know, um, uh, you know, I'm not even going to come up with an example because there's a million of them out there, but you guys are the professionals and I think could come up with some really great um, 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 ideas on some messages, very brief, that could be placed on signage and plaques throughout a city park. So that, that's kind of all that we're looking for, but it's called the Inspiration Trail. And are you looking for anything specific, like related to mental health or mental physical health. health or eating healthy, anything like that? Um, I would gear it more towards mental health because that was the context in which it came up. Is we, as many people know, um, that is we we've got a community that's really struggling um, with mental health, and it, it's it's everywhere from young people, you know, very young people, um, on up through my age. So. Um, I, I would focus more on mental health. Okay. Anybody have any questions? No? All right. I'll Thank you all. Get my next slide up here and then share. 
Doc, you thought you were all fumbles. I got three screens and I'm still messing it up. So, all right. Everybody see my screen? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You guys see the slides of tobacco prevention? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. Now I have the joy of turning this over to Helen McDonald, who is our tobacco prevention specialist, to share some of the things that she's got going on. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, you go ahead and go to the next slide. You can hear me? Everyone can hear me, right? Yep. We can hear okay. you. Yep. <laughs> So in to celebrate Earth Day, which was is coming up um, next week, we just wanted here in the tobacco prevention program, wanted to just shed a light on our smoke bait free um, parks and beaches initiative that we are advocating for in this great county of St. Lucie. Um, we know that there's a need for it, but we need more help from the community members to spread the word that tobacco free spaces like parks and beaches, recreational facilities, uh, you know, that it surged the popularity and surged throughout the U.S. over the last few years. It sets a positive um, example and provides less opportunity for our youth to start smoking. Every year, 1.69 um, billion pounds of cigarette butts, which are not biodegradable, are dumped on the earth. And this um, this amount is equivalent to the weight of eight Washington monuments. Uh, we, as we many of you may know or may not know that cigarette butts and the vape cartridges, lithium batteries, they release toxins, toxic chemicals into um, our environment and it poses a serious hazard to our marine life. Next, please. Mm -hmm. So there are some ways that you all can get involved with helping um, do this. So getting smoke-free parks and beaches, like I said, is a very important goal that has a significant impact on the public health and the environment. So here are some ways that you can um, you can make help make this happen by contacting your local officials. So reach out to your local elected officials, such as your county commissioners, your city commissioners, city council people, um, and express your support for smoke-free parks and beaches. Let them know why you think it's important to encourage them to take action against this. And I do know that we do have one county commissioner who is um, pro this um, initiative right here, and um, but we just need to get everyone else on board with that. Uh, there are you can join local advocacy efforts. So there are several organizations in St. Lucie County that are working to promote this initiative, such as the Tobacco Free Partnership and our Students Working Against Tobacco um, chapters. Uh, considering joining one of like the partnership where if you have any youth between the ages of 11 and 17 that want to join SWAT more than we're we more than um, happy to have them um, but this is to help get involved with those advocacy efforts um, the next thing you can do is spread the word use your social media and other channels to spread the word about the importance of smoke-free parks and beaches um, we want to say that we lead by example here which is our next one Um, if you visit a park or beach in St. Lucie County, you know, make sure you follow this, the, if there's not, where there's really not a smoke-free policy that's in place, but make one, you know, um, just don't indulge. You don't really have to say anything to anyone else, but, you know, just make sure that you start with yourself. Uh, this can help set a positive example for others and de demonstrate, the, demonstrate the benefits of a smoke-free environment. So by taking these actions, you can help um, make a difference in promoting smoke-free parks and beaches in St. Lucie County. And the picture that you should see on the screen here is um, some of our SWAT uh, members that are we did a beach cleanup back in February, and we grabbed up some cigarette butts and all kinds of other little things that were on the beach here. But um, the youth are out; they're excited about getting, you know, getting out in the community and and um, spreading the word about it. So we just need you all to. And of course, our uh, last but not least is our tobacco cessation resources, which we know there's put your way. And if you know of any teens that vape um, and want to help them stop vaping is live vape free. And they can text um, this vape free number or 873373 
um, just to get more encouragement and more resources to help them quit. And if you know someone else that um, needs some help, this is some resources right here. All right, and that's it. Thanks, you all. Have a great afternoon. Thanks, Helen. I'm going to go ahead and throw into the chat here. There is a website for the Tobacco Free Partners, a Facebook page, sorry, for the Tobacco Free Partnership. So I'm throwing that in there. We would love to get our followers up on that page um, so we can make sure that we're getting better reach and engagement as Helen's and her, actually more so her uh, advisor committee are posting um, information. Uh, so that one. And now we always let Jason go first. So we're going to say this time we save the best for last, right? I'm going to turn this over to Jason Barella so he can talk about some of the things that are happening in his area of expertise. Hello, everybody. Can you all hear me? We can. Hopefully. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, good to see a lot of familiar faces on the call today and some new faces as well. So I'm happy about that. Um, under Healthiest Weight, uh, right now we're running a couple of diabetes prevention programs. One is an in-person program. Um, they run it on Mondays uh, in the in the city of Fort Pierce. Um, they're about ooh, two months into their program right now. So they're going step by step and we have a coach out there who's working their way through the program. So happy to go ahead and report on that when we have some more information, but they're still going strong and, and, and doing very well, kind of gelling together as a group. That's good. Um, I also started an online diabetes prevention program called the HALT Diabetes Program. And we are currently in our third week of the HALT Diabetes Program. I know, I think I sent it out to a few worksite wellness uh, places. Uh, Mark, who's on the call today, thank you for sending it out. You have a couple of uh, employees that are that are engaging. Um, City of Fort Pierce as well, uh, BOCC as well, uh, City of Port St. Lucie also sent it out through there as well. So um, again, this is an online platform. It runs parallel with the you know Diabetes Prevention Program as far as lessons go. It is a 12-month program. There are 26 lessons that are involved in it, and it's more front-loaded. So you're at a weekly lesson pretty much for the first four months. Then we go bi-weekly, then we go monthly, more for just uh, retention and uh, trying to build that healthy habit from the beginning of the period to the end. Um, it does ask you to go ahead and do weekly weigh-ins. It asks you to go ahead and track your minutes, which will bring me to my next slide here in a minute um, uh, for activity. But um, all in all, a good experience for the first cohort going through. This was our first one to launch. Uh, we have a nice, um, you know, variety of, of participants here, and we're trying to help them one step at a time prevent diabetes. These are, these are pre-diabetic, uh, you know, cases here. So that's where we are with the diabetes. Go to the next this is where I get to put in our plug. Um, we did just repost the health educator consultant position, which would take a lead role in managing our diabetes, our pre-diabetic services, um, and helping us do outreach and, and help build up our uh, referral pipeline, those kinds of things. So if you know somebody who would be interested in something like that, um, I don't, I'll sit here and try and get that uh, link pulled up so you guys have it in the chat. Uh, but we would really love to be able to get somebody on board. Um, our, our booming team of three uh, which is Helen, Jason, and I, we're down four positions. So we would love to have some new folks on board to be able to help us with things. So, okay, Jason, sorry. I'm going to myself a message and we can get back to you as well. So, okay, absolutely. no problem. All right, moving on. Okay, I had mentioned uh, tracking activity minutes with the HALT Diabetes Program. They are to go ahead and track their minutes weekly. Um, if you know, or maybe if you don't know, I also oversee the A Billion Steps Challenge here. Um, these numbers were updated as of this morning. So I just want to take a second and look at it real quick. If you look at our goal over here on the left-hand side of the screen, we are 49% of the goal. And I can almost bet that by the end of the day, we'll be at 50%. So today's date is April 13th. I mean, we're barely four months into the year and we're 50% there. So I'm really excited. That's a great number for us just for the first, you know, half of the year. We're way ahead of the curve. Um, again, I know what my numbers are. I still want to go ahead and just blow past the billion and maybe get to two billion before the end of the year. Um, what I'm focusing on now is more recruitment. We put on 61 members for the month. Um, I know, I think I saw Ludi on the call. Ludi is one of our uh, you know, leaders for the Stepping Sisters uh, walking group that meets uh, weekly or I think five times a week now out in the community. 
Uh, a really good example of you know what community anticipation can go ahead and do. They just got organized, they got it together, and they're they're jamming. So I'm really happy that they're doing so well. Um, I reached out to a lot of the team leads. You probably got an email from me trying to get uh, you know some more recruitment from your work sites or your community groups. Um, if you have any questions or if you need me to help me with some direction or some technical assistance, please just reach out to me as well. We do leave the QR code up here on the screen. It's right inside the little cell phone looking icon there. So if you're not on the platform, go ahead and leave it up for a minute. You can go ahead and scan the code. It'll take you right to Healthy St. Lucie's uh, Walker Tracker page. You can register. It takes about five minutes. Um, once you get registered and synced, uh, it pretty much does everything for you. You just got to open the app. Um, every now and again and, and track it. Uh, Helen and I were out at a faith-based church and school yesterday and getting them going as well. Uh, they love the idea. So um, again, we're trying to go ahead and just reach out as far as we can to go ahead and get everyone in the community involved. It is a free platform, so you don't have to worry about a fee or a cost. Um, so if you have any questions or if you want one more second to go ahead and leave that up there just to uh, scan it, mm -hmm. come and join us. That'd be great. And then I think I'll move on to the next couple of slides. Okay. We can always come back if people need us to. No worries. And I did put a link in the chat as well today. Thank so. you. Okay. So with the Billions of Challenge, we do run monthly mini challenges to keep it kind of moving and keep it kind of fresh. And during March, uh, it's St. Patrick's Day month. So we went uh, walking around Ireland. Um, this is on our platform. Uh, we have three flights every month. We have a hop flight, a dash flight, and an ultra flight. Hops uh, usually are about average around 5,000 steps per day. Dashes about 10,000 steps a day, and ultras about 15,000 steps a day. And these were our winners. Um, I met Betsy at a 5K. I don't know if I know Russell. I don't know if I know Kimberly, but those are our winners for the month. As you can see, they put forth a really good effort. Um, again, this was a 14-day challenge, so even just doing simple math, I can tell they were all over 10,000 steps, um, which is setting the pace for all of their all of their uh, their flights, which is great. So um, that's who we had for the month. I'm looking forward to a new challenge this month. Um, go ahead, Steph, you can go to the next one and I'll dive into this one that we're currently running. Okay. If you didn't know, uh, April is Stress Awareness Month. So I took a step back. I know we do a lot of physical activity types of things with our challenges, but with this one, we did a little bit of meditation orientation here with things. So you can see the benefits of meditation. There's a whole list of them right there. Um, I'd say a show of hands or maybe a thumbs up in the chat if anybody's ever done meditation before. Someone has, there you go. Yes, tried it, yeah. Um, there you go, thank you, Kendra. Uh, it, it is something new to my, uh, to my repertoire here. I'm not saying I haven't tried it because I definitely have. I'm not saying I succeeded at it either. Um, I'm a very busy kind of person and it's hard for me to go ahead and do that, but I have given it the old college try and I have done it. So um, feels really good. To go ahead and take a step back. Um, and I think if you're in the right setting or if you have a minute to go ahead and try it, this is a really great month to do it because it does help reduce your stress. I am very big on physical activity, helping re to reduce stress, but I don't see why we can't combine both the meditation portion for the mental health and the physical activity for your uh, for your stress relief. So again, this is a current challenge we're running. It started April the 10th, so just started on Monday. It's not too late to go ahead and jump in. Uh, if you're on our platform, you can find a challenge. Just go ahead and you know join. If you have a question, just send me a message, and I'm happy to get you going there. But really wanted to take it just a step to go ahead and say yes, we're going to focus on our physical activity, but also on our mental mental health and our stress levels uh, for this month as well because. It is important and it kind of rolls in with what Patty Roberts was talking about with mental health being a very big problem in our community and nationally. Um, so again, give it a try. Some of the map pins on the uh, on the uh, the challenge that you can go ahead and, and look at. They have a lot of good information, a lot of good tips, um, working my way through those and happy to do it. It's just this kind of a different different trend for me because I haven't done one of those yet. So. This was new for me as well, and I'm really happy you had a chance to go ahead and do it. Moving on. Okay, always keeping the ear to the ground here. I, I think, Stephanie, you might have sent this one to me. We have another save the date, um, the bridge walk. 
It's going to be happening before our next Healthy St. Lucie meeting, so we're going to put it in now. It's on May the 6th. Um, thinking that's a Saturday. Um, Should it's be. Here with the, is it what? Is it a Saturday? I think it's a Friday. Well, well it says arrival time 8 and start at 9, so I'm thinking maybe it's a... Uh, Maybe it's a Friday or Saturday. It's, but uh, the fifth is actually a Friday. It's a Saturday because my birthday is the fifth. Sorry, I just had to put it out there. Okay. There you oh, go. Oh, thank you. Thank I'm you, Helen, for reminding us. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna be walking the, the Fort Pierce South Bridge, May the sixth. Uh suncoastmentalhealth.org uh is is also involved here. There is a QR code on the screen. Um I'll give it a minute here if you want to go ahead and at least scan that as well. Or if you have interest, just send me a message. Happy to shoot you whatever information I can regarding it. Um, I'm very big on, you know, walks or runs. Um, I like to be out in the community, seeing a bunch of different people. So these are big for me. So I'm going to try to, you know, monthly throw a new one up there and see if we can get to just save the date. Come out and and, uh, and join the walk with a run. You never know who you're going to meet. Um, and you really can make a lot of connections that way, especially we're all, you know, health professionals here. Um, and you, you really like I said you really don't know who you're going to meet when you go onto these events. So hopefully you get a chance to get out there on that day. I'm going to try to make it out there that day as well. The QR code is there. And if you have any questions, just shoot us a message. Great time to Mental Health Awareness Month, but it's also probably our last month before it really gets scorching. So it's kind of a That's good true. time to be able to go there. That's true. Okay. Okay. Next one. All right. Um, I'm putting it in the chat as well. Every month I go through the county and I look at their uh, guided hikes section. Uh, these are the ones that we have for the month. Um, the dates are there, the times are there, the locations are there. I did put the link in the chat as well. I focus on a couple of different ones. Normally they're, you know, weekends during the day. Um, the Water, Water Everywhere one has a lot of good information regarding water quality and regarding why it's so important. So I highlighted that one in blue and the ones in purple, they're night hikes, which I think is really cool. Um, as Stephanie said, it's not blazing hot yet. You know, once we get in the summer, it's that's mosquito time. So right now might be a really good time. It's probably why they planned it that way to do a nice night hike. It's probably at dusk. So if you get a chance to go out there and enjoy spru the spruce bluff preserve or citrus hammock preserve, uh, take advantage. You know, it's the end of the month. You have a couple of weeks to go ahead. They, I think they do like you to RSVP with it. That's why the link is in, in the chat. Um, but go out and, ex, ex, you know, experience the preserves that we have in this county. We have a lot of miles. We have 61 miles of preserve hiking grounds in this county, which is a lot. That's what uh, ran into uh, Aaron and Tessa out there at Oxbow, and they were talking about that. So, uh, again, I do it every month. Hopefully someone takes heed and goes ahead and just tries out. Bring your kids, bring your neighbors, bring your dog. Um, and you know, go check out the, uh, the the preserves in your area. And I think that's all I have. Yeah. I think for once, we're actually going to get people out of here early. Now, I always say that and then jinx ourselves. But um, I have a few announcements. Um, and because, of course, you guys keep hearing us, and we talked about this at our, our uh, volunteer recognition event that happened last week, we know that one of our biggest challenges is that we need to do chronic disease prevention. And we cannot continue to tackle this through individual behavioral education. Um, it's gonna have to be something that we can address from a much broader scope as a community, as employers, um, just in general working together. However, we do know that at the individual level, one of the best things that we can do for ourselves is to move more. So had to recognize National Move More Month um, this actually is an American Heart Association um, effort. Um, and really just whatever that moving more looks like for you, for the person that you care about, it doesn't have to be 10,000 steps a day. Um, anything that we do, if you can get 20 minutes, um, you know, every day, 150 minutes a week is what they recommend. It's a great opportunity. And of course, then we have to do the, the push for the billion step challenge because that which is measured improves. And so it's a very simple and easy way for you to track the level of activity that you have. So I had to put that plug in there, all right? Um, okay, so now I have a question for you. This is trivia. I told you guys, I'm trying my best to keep you in, engaged here, all right? So here's your question for the day. When was the first pedometer invented? Anybody wanna take a shot? Okay, you know me, I have to give you a hint, right? So here's your hint. 
probably not the 2000s, right? Come on, take a pot shot at it. So give me a year. No takers. Chad, you're usually on 1920. Okay. Yay, we had a taker earlier. Oh, good job, Sherry. You're close. You are close. Anybody else want to take a pot shot at it? Ken Rogers happened. Love it. Okay. It's actually 1780. If you can believe it. Now, Leonardo da Vinci was talking about this way earlier than that. But in 1780, Louis Perlet of Switzerland went through the process. He actually happened to be a, a, a clock and watchmaker, right? He invented um, and, and it was introduced to the United States by Thomas Jefferson, okay? It was actually some, a device that was worn in a vest pocket, remember back in those old time clothes, right? And it had a lever arm on it. And I think that's part of what this piece may be down here at the bottom. That was passed through a hole at the bottom of the vest pocket. The other string was tied to a strap below the knee. So as the person walked, it caused it to pull on the lever, attach the gears, and then it would keep track of the number of steps that, that person took during the day. See, isn't it just wonderful the trivia I can find for you guys? Things that just, you know, you never knew you wanted to know. But 1780. So, all right. Um, I was able to get this information. Um, I'm not sure whether Nancy Yarnell or our agency and aging folks are still on the call. Um, but Nancy forwarded this to me because it is Fair Housing Month. And the Legal Aid Society of Palm Beach County, which does serve our area, has got some um, offerings as far as trainings and access to some, uh, you know, advisement and, and things that we can do to help support fair housing in the community. Um, now, I always make some assumptions that it's a dangerous place to go. Does everybody know what fair housing is? I got some folks that have their cameras on, I'm getting head nods on. Okay, so I'm not going get, to get into that a whole lot, but wanted to make you guys aware of these opportunities. One of them, of course, happens to be tomorrow, um, and that's a discussion about, I, I, this one I don't know. I don't know what an AIR property is, an H-E-I-R property. Anybody know? Carol, I knew you'd know. AIR's property um, happens a lot with uh, in communities where someone uh, owned a home, like, a hundred years ago, grandma, and uh, there wasn't really any a title, clear title, and then that person passes away and the rest of the family members aren't really owners. They're, it's distributed by so many there's so many people, it's really hard to, to clarify the ownership. So people can't get um, uh, uh, home improvement loans because okay. they're, they're not the official owner and it becomes a uh, legal nightmare, really. Okay. So I'm assuming they're gonna talk some about how do you address that situation as well as the resources available. Pretty cool. Okay. Um, and then of course the impact of affordable housing is one of our biggest social economic barriers right now, um, which has huge impacts on people's health. And so looking at housing, um, this is it's just another, it's a, it's a heck of a month for awareness days. So we've got lots of things that we need to absorb. Um, but this is another opportunity there. And I'm trying to leave these QR codes up. I guess I should start out the every meeting moving forward with pull out your cell phone because we may have some QR codes for you to work through. Um, but I wanted to make sure I shared that. And there are actually a couple more here. This one is looking, this one's April 21st, and this is the Fair Housing Center, um, which is, again, Legal Aid Society of Palm Beach, but all of these, I believe, are virtual. Yeah, they're all virtual, and they do serve our area. So I wanted to make sure that I shared these as well. Um, and then also there's a Section 8 Fair Housing webinar uh, that will be happening on April 27th. There's a 12 p.m. one for landlords and a 6 p.m. one for tenants. Uh, and I can, if you guys decide you would like these, I hope everybody at this point has my email, just kick me a message and I'll be happy to forward them off to you. Um, and I will, Carol, I will be sending these out to the COSA listserv for those people who are involved with that. So. Then I have, and actually it's a great opportunity. I'm gonna actually turn this over to, uh, well, let me, let me do this one first and then we'll talk about it. Our very own Helen McDonald is gonna be working with Jessica Jason, who is with the uh, Area Health Education Center, AHEC, the Everglades area. Uh, and they're gonna be presenting on April 27th uh, at the Minsky Gym. And just talking about, you know, what does it look like? What does cessation look like? What resources are available? Um, 
Cal will probably be talking some more about you know, the impacts of secondhand smoke and also advertising influences and the predatory nature of um, the tobacco and the vaping industry um, on really enticing our kids and getting people to be addicted early on. So hopefully I did a decent job explaining that. I will tell you, we do need to have a minimum number of people to host that. And I'm not sure how many registrants we have at this point, but would really appreciate you guys spreading the word on that and encouraging people to register. Um, I know Minsky Gym is a hall for people who are in Fort Pierce, um, but we'd really love to have folks get engaged with that and learn some more about the resources that are available. Okay, um, the next one that's up there is one that I just found out about, and this is being uh, hosted by the Survivors of Murder and Victim Support Group, which is uh, Mary Sermons and Betty Bradwell. And uh, there we're doing a Stop the Bleed uh, training, and that's going to be done by Shanetta Neal, who's with the uh, uh, HCA Florida Hospital. Um, that's going to be on the 29th. It's going to be on Avenue D. Uh, New Life Christian Fellowship actually is well known to us because that was uh, the location for our first diabetes prevention program um, that ran for a year. But wanted to make sure that, that you guys are aware of this opportunity. Uh, one of the things I talk about is that the first person on site, if somebody's got a, a severe bleed, that person can be the huge difference between their survival and not surviving. If you wait for, for uh, EMS to get there, you may lose somebody because you know we're not prepared or don't know exactly what to do with that. So if you get a chance to participate in that, there are also some great trainings on. If you just Google Stop the Bleed, um, you can see that as well. All right. Um, I have another one put out. Again, I, this is another one that just ran across my desk. I don't know, Dallas, if you're still on or I can't tell, you know, he probably had to get off, okay. Um, this is the Opioid Summit. It's gonna be happening on May 11th um, from 8.30 to one. And there is another QR code, it'll be happening at the Fenn Center, um, but really talking about the very shocking uh, number of deaths that we have. Oh, Patty, you're on. You might, are you, you wanna talk about this at all? And then to also talk about some other stuff you're doing for May? Well, I will be happy to um, on, be, on Dallas's behalf, but um, this opioid summit is actually um, uh, presented on behalf of Drug Free St. Lucie, which is the round table, <clears throat> excuse me, and the Treasure Coast Opioid Task Force, which is co-chaired by Dallas and Eve Lyon. Um, so uh, it's a great opportunity. They've got some great, key, uh, the keynote speaker will be great and some other presenters um, that are just gonna be talking about the epidemic um, that has uh, hit our nation and the world, if you will. But it's May 11th at the Fenn Center, so, um, and the QR code is there to register. Um, the last thing I would mention is, and Jason, you kind of prepped me for this one, but um, uh, I do want to talk about May is Mental Health Awareness Month. It's a um, huge um, initiative through National Parks and Park and Recreation Association and our state organization. Um, Port St. Lucie has taken that to a new level, if you will. But in the month of May, we're going to be offering the following free programs um, to all, all guests and residents in Port St. Lucie. We will have four free yoga um, classes. Um, they Keep in mind, every event that I'm gonna mention is all outdoors. So the four yoga are gonna be at various parks throughout different areas of the city. We're also holding two forest bathing events and I don't know if everybody is familiar with forest bathing, but we brought it here last year. We only had one session and it was so packed that we're now doing two. Um, but forest bathing is essentially derived from the um, Mideastern um, culture and translated, it literally means to immerse oneself in nature. So it's a, a combination of meditation, just a tidge of yoga, um, but really mindfulness outdoors in nature. Um, and then we're also doing a specific yoga um, session on meditation slash relaxation. And that'll be at our Saints golf course um, in the evening. Um, so that's beautiful. Oh, thank you, Chad. Yes, I agree. Forest bathing is really cool. Um, and then the last one for the month that we're, well, that we're offering is a new one actually. And it's called relaxation techniques to use outdoors. And that is, um, being presented by Mr. Alan Anter um, with HCA oh. Lawnwood. Um, and he comes out and does a phenomenal, um, very practical exercises on how to manage your anxiety. 
um, which I hope I don't speak for myself, but um, I don't think I'm the only one who, who uh, has that um, issue as well. But that, that session will be uh, on relaxation techniques, will be at our Woodland Trails Park, which is in the southwestern sector of Port St. Lucie. Um, so those are our, our eight free programs coming up in May. The very last thing I would mention in May that as part of May, uh, Mental Health Awareness Month is, um, is this. We are starting a, a, a new initiative in May and it's called You, and it's the letter U, Matter. They're called You Matter Kits. And what they are is they are, we're going to be soliciting donations from the public um, for our staff to assemble a You Matter kit. And a You Matter kit is consists of things like, there. it's essentially a one day survival kit, if you will, um, toothpaste, uh, toothbrush, one uh, trial size deodorant. Um, uh, there'll be, there are snacks in it, a water bottle, um, um, uh, let's see, off, bug spray, that type of thing. Um, and um, every kit includes a 211 um, referral card for anyone requiring services and a handwritten note of encouragement. Um, so, um, you know, it might say one of one of the, I, I just looked at a, a kit that we have assembled here and it says uh, fall down seven times, stand up eight. Um, so just notes of encouragement. Um, we are going to be distributing those throughout the city to those who are experiencing homelessness um, and or of course financially disadvantaged. Um, we've partnered with our uh, police officers who want several kits for their vehicles in the month of May. Um, and we've partnered with the Treasure Coast Food Bank um, who are going to come out and pick up the kits that we get um, received, that we get here um, and um, uh, distributing them during their events for the financially disadvantaged people. So just really wanted to put a plug out. We really want the community to get involved with the You Matter kits. Um, it's a simple affirmation um, to people who are, who are going through a tough time that, hey, we we hear we see you we hear you and and it's your message is important so thank you for the opportunity Stephanie always no problem at all um, and now is the opportunity I was trying to put up some of your I couldn't find the links to this year's um, mental health stuff we did manage to find the uh, Jason put out there the oh no I've lost it hold on the information on uh, some of the healthy you pieces that are coming up. Uh, May 3rd, you've got the cyberbullying and internet safety. Yes, ma'am. If you find the link um, to the, the one that provides more detail on the forest bathing and that kind of stuff, please feel free to plop it in the chat for us because uh, we'll also be able to share that out on our Facebook pages. So. I was just responding to Patricia in the um, yep. in the chat. I, I do have a flyer coming out, I promise. <laughs> um, okay. In fact, I just uh, approved it through our system this morning. I'm hoping next by tomorrow I'll have it. Um, okay. do you want, is it okay if I forward it to you, Stephanie, to share with Absolutely. everyone? Yep, I'll be happy to send that out. I, I promise I'll have it. It's it's ready. <laughs> awesome. All right. Um, now's your guys' opportunity to do other announcements. Any? I know Sherry's always good. She probably has already put all of her information <laughs> chat. I know Christine does a good job too. But if yes. Anything, go ahead, Sherry. It's okay. Yes, I did put everything already in the chat, um, but just a couple of uh, quick things. I did put in the information about Florida Kid Care, our SNAP program, um, of course, the emergency food assistance link. Um, I did put in information about our order ahead program. Um, and then a couple of extra things um, that I don't normally include. Um, we do have a COVID vaccination outreach project right now, and those who qualify can get a $25 gift card for getting their vaccination or booster. Um, I did put the information in the chat. We do have free nutrition classes, and I put our contact person's email and phone number in the chat if anybody is interested in having them come to your site. Um, we do have CDL barista hospitality and culinary training programs, and I put the link to those programs in the chat as well. Um, we are looking for uh, college students to become youth ambassadors this summer for the Treasure Coast Food Bank, and the information and how those college students can apply is in the chat. One last announcement, um, if you know any um, uh, 
church, uh, community center, school, other non for profit that is interested in becoming a summer um, meal site this summer. I did provide the information um, where they can get more information about that program and become a, a summer meals partner in the chat as well. So a lot of announcements today. <laughs> Good. We actually had enough time this year. This time, we're usually a running. Anybody else have any announcements? Oh, there you go. Go ahead. Yeah, Carol. just wanted to mention I'm going to be doing a home energy savings program. If you have clientele that want to learn about ways to save money on their utility costs, their electric and water bill. Uh, there'll be two programs on April 27th at the late at the Kilmer Library, uh, one at two o'clock and another at 6 p.m. And we'll be showcasing a new backpack that you can check out from the library that's filled with these home energy savings devices. And you can touch them, feel them, use uh, the flow meters and watt meters to see what kind of energy you're using in your home and then um, take it back and other people can check it out too. So. It's a new thing the library has started, and we're lucky to partner with them for that. Is that the local library system, or is that the UF library? The, lo the local library system, St. Lucie County Library. Great. We're working towards getting two backpacks at each branch to, to be pack, uh, checked out, but right now we only have two at the Kilmer Library. Got it. Any other announcements? I do want to let you guys know, if you have announcements you'd like me to try and include in a presentation, you could send them to me the day before or even the morning of, and I've been known to squeeze them in um, to make sure we, we get them covered and get word out there. Um, I do, um, we've, due to some scheduling adjustments, um, I don't have a solid presenter for May. Um, I'm doing some legwork out there to see if I can find somebody who can come in and talk about the services and, and how we're doing. Um, and I don't, oh, Casey, Cassie had to get off, but Cassie's a new addition. She's been with the school district for a really long time, but she's now working with Tykes and Teens. For those of you who didn't know, Dorothy Oppenheiser has gone to work for Southeast Florida Behavioral Health. And so, but she's only been on the job a short time. I didn't want to hug her on the bus and ask her on, on screen if she could present in May. Um, but I've reached out to a couple of folks, and so we'll get somebody in. And Ariel Burnett who Sherry was just mentioning, who's doing the SNAP education. I've asked her to be on to talk a little bit about some of the work that they're doing locally, um, since we wanna make sure that her schedule and time gets filled up so that she hits her objectives, but that our folks are out there um, getting the health education that they needed. Um, <laughs> always, Sherry, always, always. I'm gonna, I'll throw a little other appetizer out there. Um, and Kendra's, I'm not calling her out, but, We've got another fun project in the works and um, that's focusing in more on health literacy. You knew I was gonna call you out, woman. <laughs> you don't have to get into a lot of detail on it, but I know you've got a bunch of other stuff going on as well, so. We're super excited. Um, yeah, right now I'm finishing up our health literacy student fellows project and the uh, the student projects are really cool, and um, I can't wait to share them. A lot of the organizations that are in the room now, students actually um, went to your websites, found uh, scholarly articles that tackled a lot of the topics, and they've made podcast episodes. So um, pretty soon, it it was it's pretty fun to see like their um, their thoughts and uh, opinions about some of these topics um, from you know a different perspective. So. Pretty soon I'll have a, a link to share, but it's been fun. Oh, love, it. love it, love it. Well, here's your chance too, because I've been hearing everybody talking about all this education they're doing out there. I don't know that everybody knows about the facility that you have as your library. You mentioned podcasts. Yeah, we have a studio. Um, it was a, a grant funded project that I launched about a year ago and it's been really fun. We have um, a green screen, we've got a Mac, we've got, um, several Canon cameras. Um, you can easily record audio and video, and it's reservable by anyone, um, community members or students. We're a joint use library, so we're a branch of the St. Lucie County Library System as well as a college library. So yeah, I'd love to, to show you around, or if you ever need any kind of uh, 
small digital project. It's a DIY space, so I'm not a, a production expert, but um, but we've had some really cool projects come out of it. So thank you. Yeah, and is your is your fellows program going to be continuing, or was this a one one year one time thing? No, we're transitioning it to um, incorporate into the research classes. So from now on, the, the same projects will be initiated, but it'll be integrated into the curriculum. So okay. that'll be good. Well, you know, I was going to put a bid in for anybody who's got a health education project. They need some help putting a video together or telling a success yeah. story. Yeah. Is exactly. that still an option? Can we? Oh, connect? yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Definitely okay. reach out. I wouldn't want you to be bored, Kendra. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's great. All right, guys. Anybody else? Oh, good. She even put the studio on there. Fabulous. All right, guys, please be thinking about folks you might want to have come on and talk the call and talk about things that are happening on issues that are related to our community health improvement plan. Um, I'm always open and they don't even have to be somebody who's come to a meeting before. If they've got some knowledge or subject matter expert in an area that we want to broaden the scope of our, our those participants, then let's let's bring them on. Let's get a chance to talk about some of that. So. Thanks so much, you guys. Great meeting, great energy today, loved it. And uh, hopefully we'll see you on May 11th. Have a great weekend, bye.